Hello and good day. Welcome back to our class. This is Teacher Onendi Guzman, and our topic for today is Proving Midline Theorems from Grade 9, Quarter 3. So, Midline Theorem is a segment that joins the midpoints of two sides of a triangle and is parallel to the third side and half as long. Let's begin with our proving. So let's consider the figure on the right side. So again, we would like to prove that the segment that joins the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side and half as long. So our given is a triangle M and P with W and T, the midpoints of MN and PN respectively. So we'd like to prove two things. First, we'd like to prove that WT is parallel to MP. And letter B, WT is equal to 1 half NP. For our proof, we will use the two column. So we have for the statement and reason. For our statement number one, we have W and T, the midpoints of M and N and P and N, respectively. So this is given. For number two, let R be on WT such that WT is congruent to TR. So that is the point plotting theorem. Number three, so we'll introduce PR, that is the line postulate for our reason. When number four, NW is congruent to MW and NT is congruent to PT, so that is actually definition of midpoint. Now, to continue with our okay, proof, our statement number five is the angle NTW is congruent to PTR. So where's that? So NTW is equal to our congruent angle PTR. Our reason is vertical angle theorem. Okay. For number six, the triangle. Triangle NTW is congruent to angle PTR. We have side angle side posture. For our statement number 7, we have NW, so we have here, NW is congruent to PR, okay? as well as angle N, N, TW is congruent to angle PTR. Now, reason is corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. For statement number 8, since NW is equal to MW, then MW is equal to PR. Our statement is we use the transitivity. Next, for our statement number 9, NW is parallel to PR and MW is parallel to PR as well. So, the reason is alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay? So, if we will look into this one, N, okay, N, W as well as okay MW. So take note that MW is parallel to PR, okay, as well as okay MW is parallel also to PR. Okay, number ten. So we have okay um, quadrilateral MWRP is a parallelogram. So we say a pair of opposite sides are both parallel and congruent. For our statement number 11, we can say that WT is parallel to okay, line segment and MP because in a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel. So that is for letter A. Let's continue for number 12. So we can say that WT is equal to TR because the definition of congruent segments. Moving on. Okay, this is a, a lengthy, okay, proof. For our statement number 13, we have WT, so that's a WT plus TR, okay, is equal to WR. The reason is definition of betweenness, and we have WT plus WT is equal to WR. Our reason is we substitute the value, okay? Since from our okay, TR is equal to WT. Next, we have okay, 
uh, WT plus WT is the same as 2WT, which is equal to WR. Our reason is addition. And number 16 and W is congruent to PR. So we can say this is in a parallelogram and the two opposite sides are congruent. To continue, WR is equal to MP. That is the definition of congruent segments. Okay, so where's that? WR is congruent to MP. Finally, we can say that 2WT is equal to MP because of the substitution. And finally, if we will divide both sides of the equation by 2, we come up with WT is equal to 1 half MP. So that is actually for our proof or okay, that we want to prove. Our reason is multiplication property of equality. So let's move on to the new definition. So the segment connecting the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is called the mid-segment of a triangle or midline of a triangle. So let's consider the figure okay, or the triangle EPI. Okay. So we can say that RC is the mid-segment, therefore R and C are midpoints of PI and EI respectively. Another definition that we have here is the line segment connecting the midpoints of the non-parallel sides of a trapezoid is called the mid-segment also. So let's consider the trapezoid okay, PHAS and there is a line segment okay, ER. So ER is the mid-segment of this trapezoid PHAS. On to the next definition, so we will use the illustration below. So the triangle mid-segment theorem states that a mid-segment of a triangle is parallel to the third side and is equal to half the length of the third side. So from our figure, so we have the triangle PMN, so we can say that the RB is equal to one half PM. Also, we can say that the line segment RP, okay, RP is equal to one half the line segment MN, and finally, the BP is equal to, where's the BP? BP is equal to one half the line segment MP. Okay. So let's try to prove the theorem. The three mid segments of a triangle divide the triangle into four congruent triangles. So let's use the illustration on the right side. So we have the triangle IJL. So that is the triangle IJL with N, K, and M are the midpoints of IJ, JL, and IL respectively. So we would like to prove that, okay, triangle J and K is congruent to triangle N, I, N. For our proof, let's have actually the statement and reason two column form. So for our first statement, NK is equal to one half IL. So that is actually we use the triangle mid segment theorem. And number two is M is the midpoint of IL. So we have actually the definition of mid segment. So this is the point M is the midpoint of IL. Number three, IM is equal to one half IL. So again, IM is equal to one half the length of IL because we have the definition of midpoint. For number four, IM, okay, IM is equal to NK because the transitivity property. For statement number five, IM is congruent to NK because definition of congruence. For number 6, N is the midpoint of IJ. Again, so we have IJ. N is the midpoint of IJ because this is the definition of mid-segment. For number 7, IN. IN is congruent to NJ because we have the definition of midpoint as well. For number 8, IN is congruent to NJ because we have the definition of congruence. For statement number 9, IL, so we have here IL is congruent to NK because we have the triangle mid-segment theorem. And for number 10, we have angle J and K, so we have angle J and K is congruent to angle N, I, N. 
we have corresponding angles of parallel lines cut by transversal are congruent. And for finally, we have triangle JNK is congruent to triangle NIM because we have the side angle side congruence. Let's move on to the application of midline theorem. So in a given triangle PMN, okay, R is the midpoint of MP, B is the midpoint of MN, and T is the midpoint of PN. So again, so if MN is equal to 12, what is equal to RT? So from the given here, so we have the points R, B, and T are actually the midpoints of the line segment PM, MN, and NP respectively. And MN is equal to 12, and we want to find out the line segment RT. So take note that RT is equal to 1 half MN, okay? So we will substitute the value of MN, which is equal to 12. So 1 half of MN or 1 half of 12 is equal to 6. So therefore, we can say that RT is equal to 6. Or specifically, we can say that RT is equal to 6 units. Let's move on to problem number 2. Again, given the same triangle, okay, with the points R, B, and T are the midpoints of the line segment, Okay, PM, MN, and NP. Okay, so if R is equal to 7.5, what is MN? So take note that, okay, 7.5 is equal to 1 half of MN. So take note that RT is equal to 1 half the line segment MN. So therefore, we can say that 7.5 times 2 is equal to MN because if we will multiply both sides of the equation by 2, so, we come up with 7.5 times 2, or we can say that MN is equal to 15 units. Let's move on to problem number 3. So, the given triangle PMN, R is the midpoint of MP, B is the midpoint of MN, and T is the midpoint of PN. So, if TV is equal to 8, what is PN? Take note that, so TV is equal to, or BT is equal to 1 half PN, Okay. So, we simply substitute the value of TB, which is equal to 8. However, if we will, multi okay, if we will multiply both sides of the equation by 2, we come up with 8 times 2 is equal to PM, removing the denominator 2. So, therefore, the PM is equal to 16 units. Using the same triangle a while ago, so we will infuse algebra in number 4. So, if TV is equal to 3x minus 2 and PM is equal to 5x minus 1, what is PM? So, recall that, okay, TV is equal to 1 half times PM, okay? So, we will substitute that TV is equal to 3x minus 2 is equal to 1 half times 5x minus 1. However, if we will multiply both sides of the equation by 2, okay, we will come up with 2 times 3x minus 2 is equal to 5x minus 1, eliminating, okay, the denominator 2. So again, using the distributive property, so we come up with 2x or 2 times 3x is equal to 6x. 2 times, okay, negative 2 is equal to negative 4, which is the same as 5x minus 1. Putting together the variables, so 6x minus 5 is equal to negative 1 plus 4. Okay, so we come up with x is equal to 3. Now that we found out that the value of x is equal to 3, we want to find out now the length of pm. Since pm is equal to 5x minus 1, so substitute the value of x which is equal to 3. So we have 5 times 3 minus 1. So we come up 5 times 3 is equal to 15 minus 1. So therefore, pm is equal to 14 units. Okay, so again, we will use the same triangle. So we have triangle PMN. So R is the midpoint of MP, B is the midpoint of MN, and T is the midpoint of PN. So again, so the given is PN is equal to 5x minus 3, and RB is equal to 2x plus 2. And we want to find out the length of RB. Again, so we will use the idea of RV, okay, is equal to 1 half PN. So RV is equal to 1 half PN. So now, we will substitute. So RB is equal to 2x plus 2, while okay, PN is equal to 5x minus 3. 
and take the one half. But if we want to okay, eliminate the denominator 2, so we will multiply both sides of the equation by 2. So leaving us, we have 2 times 2x plus 2 is equal to 5x minus 3. So distribute, so we come up with 2 times 2x is equal to 4x, while 2 times 2 is equal to 4, which is equal to 5x minus 3. Put together the variables and the uh, constant, so we have 5x minus 4 is equal to 4 plus 3. So we have here, so x will give us 7. But we want to find out the length of RB. So that is why we have RB is equal to 2x plus 2. Substitute the value of x, which is equal to 7. So we come up with 2 times 7 plus 2. Okay, so RB is equal to okay 16 units let's move on to the next uh, theorem which is a trapezoid mid segment theorem it states that the mid segment of a trapezoid is parallel to the bases and is equal to the half the sum of the lengths of the bases so consider the okay quadrilateral p h a s so er is the mid segment so, we can say that ER is equal to one-half of PH plus SA. Alright, to illustrate the theorem, so in the trapezoid PHAS, E and R are the midpoints of PS and HA respectively. So, if ER is equal to 22 and SA is equal to 36, what is PH? Again, so ER is equal to half the sum of PH plus SA. Substitute the given values. So we have ER is equal to 22 is equal to 1 half of PH plus 36. Now to eliminate the denominator 2, multiply both sides of the equation by 2. So we come up with 2 times 22 is equal to PH plus 36. So we have, okay, 44 is equal to PH plus 36. To solve for PH, we have 44 minus 36 or PH is equal to 8 units so let's move on to the next uh, problem so the trapezoid phas if pe is equal to es hr is equal to ra ph is equal to 10 sa is equal to 23 ra is equal to 7 and pe is equal to 9 so what is er as well as what is the perimeter of the trapezoid phas okay so we'll start with er is equal to one half of ph plus SA. So this is the mid segment of the okay, trapezoid. So again, so this is equal to 1 half times 10 plus 23. So ER is equal to 1 half of 33, which is equal to 16.5 units. For the second qu uh, question, so we would like to find out the perimeter of the trapezoid. However, we would like to find the length of pH as uh, HA as well as AS and, of course, okay, PS. Okay, so take note that PS is actually twice PE. So we have here 2 times 9 is equal to 18. So that is the length of PS. Next, so HA is equal to twice RA. So this is equal to 2 times 7, which is equal to 14. Next, since we know already the PS, okay, or as well as HA, so this time, we would like to find the perimeter around the polygon. So we will add the measure of the sides. So we have here pH plus HA plus SA plus PS. So substitute the given value. So we have 10 plus 14 plus 23 plus 18 respectively. So this is equal to 65. So therefore, the perimeter is equal to 65 units. So that ends our topic on proving midline theorem. Again, this is Teacher On and Guzman. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified about my new videos. Thank you.